There it is, your resume. It's been perfected, tuned, AI optimized. Your cover letter reads like smooth poetry that makes your grandma cry. And you press submit on the job application and it's crickets. Why does this keep on happening to you? I'll tell you a little secret. It's not for a lack of trying. Most candidates fundamentally have the wrong job search strategy. Today's video will go over five reasons why you're not getting interviews from tech companies, recruiters, and anyone else. Okay, one, you haven't narrowed down your job search. When I was a senior in college, I used to go to career fairs and just beg people to take my resume. So how did I end up landing a six figure data science job right after graduation? I had to do some soul searching. I had to figure out what I wanted first. The reality is that every person has a different preference when it comes to getting a job. If you're a student, are you willing to take a lower paying job right after graduation? Or are you willing to put in the work to actually interview prep, job search, and do all this work to get slightly higher paying jobs six months after graduation. Similarly, are you willing to work for a startup where you're not gonna get any mentorship at all, but you'll be doing tons of different things and gain a lot of experience? Or are you willing to instead work at a bigger tech company that essentially gives you only one thing to do, but gives you a lot of mentorship on how to do that specific thing? These kinds of questions are what's first needed to narrow down your job search. And the reasoning why is that people end up applying to a ton of different jobs, which is good, but at the end of the day, it becomes a huge amount of variety and not actually fulfilling their own criteria. You can't expect every single job to be perfect and you can't expect the jobs that you're applying for in a bad job market to actually be realistically perfect as well. You have to narrow it down to a selection criteria that works for you. By answering these kinds of questions, you can narrow down your job search criteria, which will help you with qualifying yourself for different kinds of jobs and to figure out what's actually possible. Two, you're not applying for enough jobs. Richard, my internet interview query, was telling me the other day how he wanted a job as soon as possible. I asked him how many jobs he applied to. He told me 10. 10? Only 10? What the fuck, Richard? The truth is, if you want to get a job in this economy, you have to apply to a ton of jobs. And again, those jobs have to fulfill your own search criteria. Think about the job search like a funnel. At each step of the interview process, from putting in your job application all the way to getting an offer. The best way then to get a job is to either increase your conversion rate at every step of the funnel or to just apply to more jobs at the top end of the funnel. I've talked to a lot of people who've gotten jobs in the past six months and some of the people have applied to hundreds, even thousands of jobs before they got that first job offer. The reality is that focusing on quantity instead of quality is most of the time the best approach towards getting a job. And you might say, Jay, everyone is telling me that I need to write a personalized cover letter and tailor my resume just for the job. And I'm not denying that that shouldn't happen. Yes, you need to do those things for jobs that you feel extremely qualified for or the ones that you feel extremely pulled to and resonate. But don't make perfect the enemy of the good. Do you think it's better to spend the same amount of time applying to 100 different kinds of jobs at an 80% application quality rate or is it better to just apply to 10 jobs with 100% effort? If we run the expected value calculation, it's much better to apply to more jobs without perfecting every single thing at the same amount of time. Three, you're not being realistic about the competition. 90% of applicants only apply to these big tech companies or fang companies and then wonder why they get rejected immediately. Spoiler alert, these jobs are super competitive. The average big tech company probably gets a thousand applicants for every single job posting that they post about. I know this because every single time we posted a job at one of my former companies, we would get hundreds of applications within the first few days. By probably the end of the month, there'd be a couple thousand of applicants. This means if they interview 10 people for the job, that's literally a 1% conversion rate on your application. Which goes back to my last point in which you probably have to apply to 100 different jobs in order to get one interview called back. But that's not the case for all companies. If you find one way to increase your conversion rate from job application to actual callback ratio from the recruiter is to actually apply to less competitive jobs. I call this low hanging fruit jobs. These are the jobs that no one else really thinks about or thinks about as being particularly sexy or that competitive. If you find jobs that aren't as competitive where you stand a better chance of getting interviews, you'll get more interviews and you'll get more practice as well. Even if 
if you don't actually want that job to begin with. For example, one way to find this is to look at jobs that aren't just remote only. I know finding remote jobs are amazing, but if you're early on your career, it's way better if you actually go in person anyway. Another is to find roles that are not as sexy in the beginning, right? So if we're talking about data science, then looking for data analytics or data engineering jobs, those are gonna be less competitive than data science jobs. Similarly for software engineering, front end jobs are generally less competitive or stuff like DevOps or cybersecurity. Lastly, on the company front, if you look at companies that are not just the big tech companies, you'll realize that these companies actually need a lot of applicants. They actually post on job boards or they sponsor their job posting because they need more applicants to the door. Those are the ones that are going to be less competitive and where you'll have a higher chance of at least getting a new four. Your resume or your portfolio just doesn't stand out. Now, I just talked about volume, which was the number of jobs that you actually applied to. But the second big thing to fix is really that conversion rate, which is essentially if a recruiter sees your resume, how many of them actually call you back after they see it? There is a conversion rate ratio for every single person that has a resume. It's just how it works. So at the end of the day, it's really important for your resume to actually stick out. Think about a recruiter that has to go through 100 resumes in a day. Which ones are they gonna spend five seconds actually reading thoughtfully and which ones are they gonna pass after half a second? But this doesn't mean creating a rainbow colored resume for your resume to just jump out to the recruiter. That would actually probably harm you in the long run because the ATS systems probably wouldn't parse that correctly. Instead, what you should do is actually make your portfolio stand out and make sure that your resume points directly to your portfolio. If a recruiter is looking at your portfolio, you should make sure that one, it stands out and it two, conveys out your mission and your headline for what kind of job you want. So for example, if you're a designer or a data visualization expert, your portfolio, when you click on it, should immediately showcase really nice charts and communicating a project that you did in the past. If you're a data scientist or an engineer, then you wanna make sure that your projects are interactive or super interesting, or they provide some insight on your portfolio. Again, the whole name of the game is attention grabbing. Five, apply to jobs right after they're posted. Most of the time on Indeed, people search for a job posting and then they get these results returned by relevancy and apply to those jobs. Stop doing this right now. Instead, use Boolean searches to filter your results according to your job search criteria and make sure to return the results by date posted. The reasoning why is that recruiters look at only a set number of resumes when they're actually interviewing people. Most of the time when I was working at a company, a recruiter or a hiring manager wouldn't go past the first 100 or 200 resumes that are in the ATS system. So if you apply to a job that's, you know, been on for seven days or on the market for 30 days, your resume is never even going to be seen. They might have already interviewed candidates and the job might be one of those dead ghost jobs that we hear about. So it's super important to first make sure you're still getting relevant results by using Boolean searches. So for example, let's say that you have skills in Tableau from a previous job or a previous internship. And let's say you're also looking for data analytics positions. What I would do is I would type into Indeed quotes around data analysts and, and then quote Tableau for you to get all the jobs that basically mention both and then sort by date posted so that you can apply to the newest job as one of the first 10 applicants. That way your resume will show at the top of the digital stack and your resume will also be qualified enough for the employer. Now, lastly, let's say that you get a call back from the recruiter. They say they wanted to schedule a technical interview with you by Monday. What are you going to do? Well, if you're interviewing for a data science, software engineering or machine learning job, you're gonna use Interview Query. Interview Query is the number one interview prep platform for anyone who's trying to get a data job in tech. We have hundreds of real interview questions from top tech companies along with in-depth solutions. We even have a mock interview feature that allows you to practice with other people that are also interviewing at the same time. But don't just take my word for it. Here's what one of our members has to say about Interview Query. He said, Hi, Jay. I wanted to personally thank you and your team for creating and maintaining IQ. I have always had a difficult time with interviews, almost never got past the tech screen. The frameworks provided for each of the types of interviews has really helped. And now I'm in the offer stage with more than one company. Keep up the great work. That's all it is. Check us out. If you need more help on your resume, add some comments below. Thanks for watching, everyone. All right. Bye.